Hey folks, Abby here. Just before we get started, I want to say thank you so much for being here. I started this podcast at the beginning of the year in January 2021, and now here we are past halfway, right at the end of season two. What an amazing journey it has been. And honestly, I feel so humbled to have talked to such a wonderful array of guests. It has meant the world to share this with you. And I'm really excited for us to come back on September the 6th, when we're going to begin our final season, season three of the year to wrap up 2021 and our first year in podcasting. But in the meantime, if you want to follow along with Spend More Time in the Wild, please do head across all of our social platforms. We are on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, if that counts. I very rarely post on there, but we are on Twitter. Um, And we're exploring other things as well. Subscribe to our newsletter on the website, but basically get involved. And we are also in the throes of preparing for our biggest project yet. So head on to all of those platforms or whichever one you fancy, and you'll be able to follow everything on there. Thanks, folks. I'm grateful you're here. Now let's dive into our final episode of the season. I really hope you enjoy listening today. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the One Wildlife podcast with me, Abby Barnes. This is simply a show about life, and as such, there are no boundaries to where our conversations can take us. Along the way, we simply aim to inspire, empower, educate, and uplift, exploring how we can all live our best lives every single day. Before we get started, I want to mention that this podcast is hosted by Spend More Time in the Wild, which I founded in 2016 to help individuals get outside for the benefit of mental and physical health. Over the last few years, the project has grown into a worldwide community of passionate and courageous individuals working together to enjoy the beauty of our wild spaces and protect them for generations to come. You can find out more about both the podcast and Wild by visiting www.spendmoretimeinthewild.co.uk. Don't forget to subscribe to this podcast wherever you're listening or head on to YouTube to watch the full episode. Russell Hepton began hiking when he was living in London five years ago. His first step into the outdoors was a failed summit of Ben Nevis, the highest mountain in the British Isles, in winter conditions. He described standing in a whiteout, alone on the switchbacking trail, with nothing but the soft sound of falling snow around him. He turned back, but thankfully for us all, this was to be his ignition into a newfound passion for the great outdoors. Now, I say thankfully, because Russ has since been on a mission to share his travels and adventures through online vlogs, blogs and podcasts. He became known as the trail hunter and has generously offered tips and inspiration for those of us looking to get out hiking and traveling with fantastically visual and engaging content. From summiting a volcano at sunrise to gear lists, Russ really has covered some ground. More recently in the throes of lockdown, Russ engineered a strong, lightweight, environmentally responsible set of notebooks designed for use on the trail through notes. His hope is to enable his customers to record miles of memories in a more meaningful and creative way than just using a phone on a medium which will stay structurally sound on a through hike whilst having an extremely low impact on the environment. What's not to love about that? Well, I think it's about time we met the man. Russell, welcome to the podcast. Hello, Abby. Uh, As I said a minute ago, uh, just as we were chatting, it's an absolute honour to be on this podcast and to finally meet you. I've been watching your videos for years, ever since you did the South Downs Way. I did a little search, up you came, South Downs Way hike, and I was hooked. So thank you so much for having me on. <laughs> the pleasure is, is mutual. Ah, well, it is a, a Friday afternoon in July. How, how are you doing? Have you just finished a working week? What are things looking like for you at the moment? Just, just finished the working week. Um, so for work, I'm a, a product, like a digital product designer. Hmm. So that's how I earn my trail tokens. Uh, I'm working for a company that specializes in cryptocurrency stuff. Hmm. So I'm currently building an app which will allow you to um, run financial agreements without a bank. And that's all I will tell you. So that's I'm designing it, working with some people to build it. Yeah, I love it. It's great. <laughs> But it's a lot of hours at the computer, so yeah. I can imagine. Is, is that all sort of coding-based stuff, or is it? 
different. So I can I can write code, but I mainly do the kind of research, mm. like getting users in front of the camera and kind of uh, recording their movements on different things, like tools that I've designed, and then I'll iterate from that and build on them and just keep designing, building and testing. And then um, developers will build and do all the code for me. So yeah. Love it. It's not my area of expertise, so I'm, I'm glad that's being left to you. <laughs> I'm sure it's going to be <laughs> yeah. awesome. No, so you actually studied yeah. um, design and visual communications in, in Bournemouth, right. is, is that right? That's correct, yeah. So does that come under sort of an arty thing? And if so, have you always had sort of that creative element to you and your personality? Um, I don't know if I always have. I mean, I remember when I was a kid, I, I must have enjoyed painting and drawing as a lot of children do and then I mean I didn't realize what I wanted to do as a career or for the rest of my life because I, I left school early at the age of six as soon as I was 16 I was like dad I'm leaving school I, I, it just didn't interest me whatsoever I think the only things I learned was um basic english <laughs> basic arithmetic and a little bit of science I don't know what mm. I got from it but I got a full-time job at a uh, Costa coffee shop in Basingstoke. Nice. And I could make a good cappuccino, but <laughs> my mate came, my mate came in and he was like, come on, mate, you can't, you can't just do this for the rest of your life. <laughs> Nothing against people that do, because it is a great job. Yeah. He was like, come on, come to college, just do anything, but just come to college. So mm. I said, all right, mate, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. And um, in order to actually go to the college for free, I needed to do some GCSEs and do okay. like a minimum of eight. Mm. And they said, oh, you could do an art NVQ and that will fill up your timetable enough to do it for free. And they said, it'll be easy. You just have to come in. I was like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll just do that because it sounds easy. And I ended up falling in love with it, this art oh, NVQ, because it, cool. was, it wasn't about just drawing and painting of, like from still life, which you do a lot of in school. It was about design and mm. what it means to build things and design things and iterate and actually come up with an idea and make a product or a service out of that yeah and I was like whoa and one of the tutors said um I think the quote that got me hooked was you are designers and you can change the world and nobody had ever said anything like that to me before uh, so I was hooked and that's how I got into it and then went through the whole um college and then university thing at um, Bournemouth I was there for four years and a few years in London doing internships and loads of other design jobs freelancing for the last eight or nine years and now Covid's hit everything's remote so I'm just doing it from home <laughs> that's it man that's it hope that answers that <laughs> it does I can ask you a very personal question this is between two hikers how old are you Russ anything. how old are you I'm 30 I'm 33 33 got it man got it it's like yeah, oh, you I'm... know because like obviously we're both on YouTube we both you know and um I'm always like curious to to know how old people are and what, what how old are you to? I have just turned 25 Oh I, yeah, I, whose I, podcast was it? I'm was losing it Bob track of Cartwright. Oh I'm yeah, Bob. Pod, yours on Bob Cartwright's, and you were 24, 23 24, at the time, and I was. Yep, yep. I was gobsmacked. I was gobsmacked. <laughs> really? Yeah, I don't know. I just, I don't know why. I just thought you're so much more articulated. <laughs> I was saying you're quite articulate. Look at this. We're both fan boy girling out right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's got to be done. It's got to be yeah. done. And everyone else gets the <laughs> yeah. entertainment. So I hope you're enjoying this, guys. Um, no, <laughs> yeah. So where so where does the outdoors fit into this then? Because, you know, there you are in London, pacing the streets. Mm. What was it, like nine to five? I'm just going to jump in with an out and out or something uh, right there. Um, yeah. Where does greenery was... come in? Uh, yeah, that's a really good question. So um, 2015. Mm. Was it 2015? 2014 I'm looking back in my mind's eye 2015 was when I went to Ben Nevis yeah and I was going going through a rough time mentally but I didn't know it mm. it was one of those like things were catching up with me I didn't realize what it was yeah because you just don't if you've never been through uh, like an onset mental breakdown you don't know it's coming until it's there mm. And then everyone I've spoken to has had one that's like yeah. kind of 
described it as that as well. Anyway, I, I took some time off after breaking up with a girlfriend, which was really stressful. Mm. And um, I was like, I've, I've always wanted to hike up a mountain. Uh, but I was like, what's the biggest one in Britain? Had no idea. Didn't I'd never even been to Wales. I'd never been to Scotland. But I'd always wanted to go somewhere like that. Yeah. And then my stepbrother was like, oh, Ben Nevis, just, just go up to Scotland, do Ben Nevis. And it was March. <laughs> <laughs> Had no idea what I was doing. So that was that. Um, you said a bit about that in the intro, which was cool. And I, I just, as, I, as you said then, I, I fell in love with that. And then a few months later, I went to California on a holiday with two friends. And we went to Yosemite and I was like, wow, this, this is just, that's all I wanted to do on that holiday. Cause we went to LA, we went to Vegas. I wasn't interested in those at all. Mm. Like it was, it was noisy, smelly, dirty, just your typical big city. But Yosemite was just mind blowing, but we were only there for a few days. And just because we were there for such a short time, that also like, started developing like an itch yep. to, to get outside a little bit more and then like I was living with um, a housemate which our relationship is because we were all moving on our relationship started to kind of deteriorate and every, like work was really busy personal life was really busy I just ended up getting really unwell um, at work mm. and I was I was sat um being briefed in the ear by somebody just in front of my desk at work and all of a sudden the room just starts like spinning and voices like all over all around me just mm. oh and like that you know that feeling when the hairs on the back of your neck start standing up yeah and I had to get up I, I said Colin I've got to, I've got to get out I've got to go downstairs and get some fresh air and I literally left work hid behind a brick wall <laughs> And then rang my dad and he was like, do you want me to come get you? Do you want me to like, I was like, I don't know what's going on. Like just panic, proper mm. panic. And then called up the doctors, got a appointment for that evening to go and get assessed. And you, I'm filling out this form and it's saying, do you ever have A? Do you ever have B? Do you ever have C? Suicidal thoughts? And I ticked yes. And I was just like, mm. like, what's going on here and just I just broke down in front of this doctor because I was it was just so stressful to be like hit with all of this info about yourself that you didn't even realize yeah until you're filling out this form anyway that that then began my psycho psychological journey mm. um, from having that kind of panic attack breakdown episode because of the whole situation of where I was in that period of my life but then I look back on that trip to Yosemite and that trip up to Scotland and remembered how how I didn't feel like that at all while I was doing those things while I was out hiking so I decided let's go traveling on my own and do a lot of hiking and a friend of mine said why don't you go to Indonesia because there's volcanoes you can go scuba diving hiking you can go to the rainforest in Borneo and just it all sounded amazing and that trip just was the seed of yeah. it all I hiked up as many volcanoes as I could did the scuba dive went to Borneo sort of orangutans in the wild and it was just like this is what I need to do with my life right like for the rest of my because for that whole trip I just felt so good, you know, just like no, no ego, no panic attacks, no, just, just good people, good experiences. And, you know, that's how the green got into yeah. everything. But then like the creativity was always there. So I thought if this is something I want to do for the rest of my life and I like, I like being creative, I like making things then what can I do? with the outdoors that enables me to do both. So traveling, hiking and all that, as well as being a designer of whatever I wish. Um, and so I thought YouTube, 
that was the first thing that popped into my head. So I started okay. looking at hiker YouTubers and you're one of those. And uh, John Zahorian was one of the first ones I started watching, just loved how smooth and calming his videos were. And I was like, I could have a, I could have a stab at this and see how I get on. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's how that all came about. And yeah, that's where I am at the moment. Yeah. I think I think that's brilliant and you know thank you so much for sharing that a little bit about your personal journey there with regards to the the mental health side of thing because I think you know it almost seems that this kind of story is becoming more and more common you know yeah. and um, we're working on a big project here at Wild at the moment and you know we're saying to people 18 months ago mental health and conversations around mental health were in a select few households but now every single house pretty much under the sun is having conversations about mental health because of this pandemic and COVID-19 and all that jazz. Um, mm. You know, so I think it's just becoming more and more relatable. People who've never struggled and, and have been structurally sound are suddenly finding themselves feeling vulnerable and overwhelmed. Mm. And, you know, you, you sharing your story there. Yes, you went to Indonesia. And, and sometimes that's what it takes is to go somewhere completely new, all the different sights and sounds and um, entirely different culture to sort of snap you back into yourself almost into a, a version of yourself that you didn't even know existed um and that's sort of what the outdoors can really do for us isn't it and yes it can be in, in indonesia but for some people and you know for yourself for example you hadn't been to scotland or wales i'm sure you know ha, ha, in fact let's hear from you how did you feel so did you drive to the the base of ben nevis or what did that look like what was that experience walk us through the emotional setup of that sure i mean oh. I rented a car from London, got like I hadn't driven for years because I, I had to sell my car when I left uni. And I was like, this is weird because I hadn't, I hadn't traveled or done anything like that by myself. Uh, rented this car and I'm driving up there. And as soon as you get to like the Lake District, mm. things start really opening up. You're going up the M6 and then you get past Carlisle. You see that Scotland sign and that was interesting that was a really cool moment and then things start really like opening up around you just drive even just driving getting on the a82 yeah. man that road just i was i it took me like four hours to drive down because i kept stopping <laughs> <laughs> i was just like i've just driven here but like, i couldn't believe i like it's on the same piece of land you know you don't even you, until you see it for the first time you don't realize just how huge these hills are i say hills mountains but then um i did the thing where i uh, stayed in a hotel and then um the next day i was like i need a flash i need a headlamp because i didn't have one and i went into the Ellis brigham shop and um they said are you climbing the ben and i was like oh the ben what's the ben oh ben nevis <laughs> they call it the ben <laughs> and <Locals>. uh <laughs> they, they just went like that to each other these guys working in the ellis brigham shop and i thought what are they whispering about and they just looked at me like an absolute fool and they said you're doing it on your own and i was like yeah they were like right we're just gonna <laughs> kick you out they said you need because it's winter conditions up there full winter conditions you're talking like a foot of snow white outs blizzard wind everything and i just you know i did the typical thing of typical tourists oh it's only ben it's only scotland it's only great britain yeah. the mountains are it's not the, Him the himalayas but you can't you can't once you're up there in those conditions there is no distinguish di distinguishing between the himalayas or ben nevis mm. because the skills that you require to navigate that terrain in those conditions are the same yeah in theory but I didn't know that. <laughs> so I, um, I, they kicked me out with some crampons, didn't know what a crampon was until then. An ice axe, had no idea how to use it. And uh, Did you feel day, like super cool getting all this stuff? I was Instagramming everything. <laughs> yeah, I like, bet you were. Yeah, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> didn't take it seriously enough. I'll admit it, just didn't. I was just like, nah. And then um, you go up, I, call, I don't call it the tourist path. I don't think that's right. It's actually used, they used it for pack horses and ponies yeah, yeah. to take supplies up. And that's what, what it's built for. And uh, if I went up the pony trap, you go past uh, the lake or the yeah. Lohan on the left, 
turn right and you start switching back. I got to like the third one and I couldn't see it, couldn't see any footsteps anymore, had a compass and a map that I didn't know how to use. And I just turned around, sat on my butt and was like, what am I doing? <laughs> like, uh, and that was continuing on the story you said in the mm. intro. But yeah, that again, that that trip was just, I think that was the initial seed um, that got planted. But then the next day, a friend of mine posted um, a link to me on WhatsApp or whatever it was. And it was a lad went missing up there on the same trail. He was from London wow. and we weirdly look kind of similar. And three weeks later, he, his body was found frozen. Oh I think near, was it near the, the main gully on the north side? I'm not entirely sure. But it was like, whoa, Yeah. if I had kept going, would, would that have been me as well? Mm. But then obviously you feel like really sad for the family of, of, of that chap that fell. But that was like my first recollection of feeling like, oh, I could have actually been in real bad trouble there. Proper reality check, isn't it? Yeah. Mm, yeah. I think that's the thing with nature is it's very humbling. It puts us in our place. You know, we are mere humans. <laughs> I say that. I say that all the time. I yeah. say, like, guy at work, Richie, he was like, what? Like, um, have a great time um, on your trip to Snowdonia the other week. And I said, yeah, mate, I need it. It puts me in my place. Like, it makes it gives me perspective on mm -hmm. things and helps me kind of like, I don't know, work can get stressful but then I spend a weekend in the hills and I come back and I was like, why, why was I even stressed about that? It doesn't, yeah. even, it doesn't even make sense. That's it. That's it. What would you say are, what's in your toolbox to help you stay level and grounded? So getting out to nature, is there anything else that sits in that box? It was um, meditation for a while, Cool. but I'll, I'll be honest, I, I completely slacked it off. I don't know why. I, I keep thinking to myself, I, I need to do that again. I need to do that again. Mm. But Open I feel place. like it's one of those, yeah, it's one of those things I started. I don't want to say getting good at meditation because it isn't something that you just get, you get good at mm. because it, it's always, it's always just an observation of yourself. So, but I was, I was in a routine of it and I was able to really quickly, um, begin watching my mind and observing it that takes that takes practice being able mm. to observe your mind and realize that you aren't your mind so that that really helps um stemming from that the power of now and oh, yeah. Eckhart Tolle his yeah. YouTube channel really super popular dude but read his book for the first time and when that famous phrase it was you are not your mind and then that story of how he jumped out of his ego and realized that he can just observe his thinking. That was like a huge eye opener for me. And I feel like I had a, a mini awakening. I wouldn't say I was enlightened or anything, but I was like, whoa. <laughs> I was like, and I was like, but like, whenever you're stressed, angry or happy or anything, just like being able to observe your thinking and not get trapped in your thinking and become your th your thoughts. Mm. That that's just a real huge strength to have. Yeah. Um, especially like if you're going through a challenging moment, whatever it may be, something at work or anything, just just observe yourself. Yeah. Otherwise, what a lot of people do is just get caught up and either get angry or upset or uh, anxiety sets in. But ever since that, ever since just reading that book so much better mm. so apart from that um just remembering that is is a lot of the time good enough yeah um yeah. but it's an ongoing thing and mm. i'll probably get back into it a lot more That's it. as uh as time goes by no you know it's cool i'm picking up from you some um some parallels with me and my journey with my mental health actually saying that you you know, you didn't know what was going on almost because you didn't have the language um, and filling in that form with the doctors, you know, actually seeing things printed in black and white ink, those words associated with you and your mental space. It's, 
it's quite a yeah it's 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 intimidating it's intense but that really is what empowers you having the language having the knowledge means you can then use that in a way to take forward steps to managing things um so it seems like you've done that pretty well so that's good (laughs) well Um, it was it it takes it takes i think eckhart tolle says it takes suffering for you to to want to develop past it Mm. so like unless you've never been through that you'll just keep going about your daily life as is it's like there was a famous um news reporter i think it's an american chap and he had a breakdown live on um tv uh, when he was doing the news and now because he's living like this really fast paced life didn't but he didn't realize just how stressed he was Mm. until he just went over that edge but then once you've gone over one edge you can um build from that and actually move past it and yeah use that as a tool to your advantage yeah no solid okay so what i want to do is is stick with this theme but jump forwards now and then the middle will fill in in a little bit so you've just taken three months of social media um that's a big step in the 21st century i feel um i admire you for that and i am striving towards that goal um not that i think my relationship is unhealthy but it's annoying and it needs i need a break from it so why did that happen like why did you choose to take that up to step to sort of step back from the public face and Uh, because i forgot why i was doing it for one Mm. i forgot why i was even hiking in the first place just forgot I was like, am I hiking to make videos? Mm. Am I hiking for me? I was like, I forgot why I even started hiking. So that was one. Two, I'll be completely honest, it's so hard after the Pacific Crest, what happened on the PCT, having to come home. It was so hard watching other people do it Mm. and crack on with it this year. I'm not going to lie. It wasn't a jealousy thing, but it was like a, man, I just just wish that was me man just yeah. wish that, like, i had it had it in my grasp i was like i just can't watch it and it's upsetting so <laughs> i'm just gonna just gonna step away from that yeah um third reason there's i wrote all these down on a through notebook a little while back third reason was just just connecting back with um family and loved ones like had a really good few months just mm-hmm. focusing on that so that was really nice and hiking without it oh man yeah. just not have not feeling like you have to even take a photograph and share it so but after a while um you start wanting to do that again and that was nice yeah so uh, like three months for me was a good time i think halfway through the third month and i'll be out in these beautiful places and be like i've had it i've, I've had enough selfishness now i want to start sharing for sharing sake mm. and it, it started not being sharing because i feel like i had to and it's all like you realize it's all in your head it's all like you know yeah. but i think also having your followers have a break from you it like i've received so many messages from followers mm. who've actually said it's so good to have you back and do you know what? I've, I've really missed your content i didn't re- i've had people say i didn't realize how much i would miss you have having you around on my instagram feeds and that so that was in that was touching and interesting at the same time because you don't realize just how much people one value you and i don't think they realize either yeah which is really interesting so it makes it it ma- it's it's brought back a bit of a spark um and i've also i've also learned that i think i'm going to focus on one thing at a time from now on so i'm going to do more instagram and through notes on the through note side yeah um than youtube for a while yeah um because i just think i just find you can't multi multitasking really as a myth yeah you can only really do one thing super good like yeah. really well yeah so I i'm gonna give it that a task go. switching isn't it it's like you can never actually multitask your brain just switches from one to the other yeah 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 and again going back to uh, mental health like to, it's just the whole overload of it you know trying to keep track also like lastly just negativity on youtube is rife i don't yeah. know i i don't know what your comments are like on your videos but mine some of them are like, horrible 
Some yeah. of some of the stuff I get is horrible. Yeah. And I'm all for criticism, but only if it's unbiased and if it's actual criticism and in, yeah. like, oh, have you thought about doing this? Oh, have you seen how this guy does that? And actually sharing ideas instead of just being like, you're wrong. This is how it's, and it's like, yeah, but this is how I do it. Mm. This is what I'm sharing. I'm sharing my way of doing things and yeah. not somebody else's. And I, I just get so much flack. And I started checking my comments the other day when I got back online on youtube and was just like why am i even reading this This is just rubbish yeah although you get like the odd one that's just super lovely but the negative the negative it's it's pain it's it's painful so your mind remembers it more and it plays around in your head a lot more yeah so for now i've i felt like putting a post on my youtube um community page just saying if you have a legitimate question or you have some constructive feedback just email me mm. Um, and if you want to do that, you can email me at hello at the trailhunter dot com. Well done. Instead of me having to read through all the negative, which takes ages, yeah, to get to that gem of constructive criticism or that, you know, that that positive comment. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. you know, I really I want to take some time to pick this apart because we have just gone through a seriously tough time. We're still in a tough time. We've just chatted about that briefly, and. You know, I, I'll be honest with you, I don't read my YouTube comments anymore. I hardly even read my social media comments because um, I'm of the same opinion. If someone really wants to get in touch, they will. Um, I have had some really, during the um, last summer, 2020, we actually ended up going abroad. We went to um, Germany, Austria and Italy, spent a bit of time bombing around the Alps in Italy. Nice, um, nice. We were perfectly legal and allowed to, and we were actually homeless at the time. Um, and people were making all sorts of assumptions and it almost feels like COVID just shook the world and what fell out was everybody's anger. <laughs> um, and I was, I was really astonished, you know, and I'm just going to be completely transparent here by how the outdoor community handled it. People just attacked each other. I, I left pretty much every Facebook group I was in. I, I'm not an active yeah. user of social media. I use it for my channel and that's it. I don't really check it for personal uses, but that stuff was coming up on my wall and I'm like, no, thank mm. you. I'm leaving that. Like, this is not what a community is about, you know, like hear the full story. And, um, you know, you alluded to what happened on the PCT and I'm actually going to ask from, from a point of genuine curiosity, because I've briefly heard the story. Um, from what I know, you were out there, then COVID happened, you kept hiking and people didn't like that. Is, is that very loosely the right thing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I, 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 I just, I don't know. COVID, we, we are, as I said, we're working on a big project right now and we are passionate about mental health. Mental health, one of the things involving mental health, supporting our mental health as community is connection, is being outside in nature. And we feel so strongly we've de- been deprived of the fundamental things that we need as human beings. And we're now judging each other for choosing life, essentially. Um, how was it for you when you were on the trail making those decisions independently and then with all of the noise of the world hmm. feeding in, trying to steer you in either direction? I mean, I'm all about... I know it's a really cliche thing to say, but ever since going on that um, psychological journey over the last few years, I'm all about just just saying what I want to say, being being authentic, not lying, and not not sugarcoating stuff. Yeah. So when COVID started to build up, um, I was actually travelling around the UK at the time, just just living out of my car. Didn't didn't like like yourself, homeless. Yeah. Didn't have a <laughs> didn't have anywhere to, to go just doing my own thing and um i've got wind i was just about to into go to bob cartwright to do a, a video podcast about his new setup and what he does and i got an email or a message from some friends saying you need to go to the us now because they're going to shut their borders because this covid thing so i did i just went it was the most stressful 48 hours of my life but <laughs> I, I was there like the next day it was weird i was i went from being in the malvern hills like not knowing what i was doing to just going straight to america to avoid this thing and then i started the trail early which you know is frowned upon by a lot of people but at the time hardly anyone was starting but everyone was starting as soon as they could 
So when, so then, for, for people who aren't familiar with the Pacific Crest Trail, when would you normally mm. start and when did you start? So the starting season to go northbound is between mid-March to mid-May to June. Mm -hmm. um, and my start date or my permit was like the 23rd of March. Okay. And I ended up starting on the 9th or something. I can't remember the exact dates, but it was yeah. about a week and a half, two weeks early. Got it. Um, and at that time of the year, it, you can expect snow in the high desert. Yeah. Um, so I was prepared with my spikes already. Mm. And I picked up an ice axe in um, Julian. You knew how to use that now. San Jacinto. Thank you, Ben. Nervous. Yeah, now to use that <laughs> thing now. But it wasn't until I started uploading videos of me because I wasn't really in the loop of it. I wasn't really aware of what the guidelines were. Mm. So I left my wallet and my permit and everything on the bus to Duke to Campo. And then the bus driver came back and I gave her a hug and a peck on the cheek. Yeah. Just because that's what I'm like. I like yeah. to, you know, I just, I just, I was like so happy that, that she'd helped me out. Um, and as soon as I uploaded that, that's when things started going south. Um, just yeah the hatred on that wasn't good and I was like oh I realized I'd made a mistake but it's too late <laughs> I can't do anything about it now I've learned yeah. something but and then I got to Idlewild and started uploading videos one of them was of me when I decided to leave the trail because the BCTA um asked they just asked people to leave the trail um and then I was speaking to a, a few fellow hikers and they were like look if you leave now a week's time it might all blow over and they might let people on so what a waste of time mm. so you might as well stay on give it a week yeah plus there's no there's no virus as we can tell out here in the goonies you know you're out <laughs> in the nice. middle of nowhere yeah you're far from anyone i was hiking alone so i uploaded a video saying look i don't think there's any virus out here i'm gonna stay on this is what i'm thinking um xyz so Uploaded that when I got to Idlewild and yeah, that's when I was like, I'm just going to down tools. And then um, friends and family started getting really worried because I was getting death threats saying, we're waiting for you in uh, Big Bear. We're going to come get you in Big Bear. All these like really nasty things. I didn't read them. Mother Arth was reading them and just said, you don't want to know what they say, but there's really some serious shit going on. Excuse my language. Oh, please. I, you probably have. You probably have quite a few younger viewers than I. Oh, so good, mate. So good. Authenticity. You can Come on. That out. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I finished the San Jacinto after having a real stressful, really sad um, few miles because of Trevor Leo, who sadly lost his life. Because I'd hiked with him, he he fell from the San Jacinto range. In the snow. I, I right? finished that range. Oh yeah, it was it was hard. It was it was just the most mentally taxing, stressful 215 miles I've ever walked. Yeah. And I got down to the I-10, and I'm just sat there in this state of mind where I was just like, "What am I doing? Like this isn't what a through hike should be." I just wasn't happy. I was like, "This should be a, a happy thing, you know? I should be like." enjoying every step of this thing whether it be difficult or not you know mm. and it was just like this is I, i'd rather do it when all of this isn't around so I, I just decided the right thing to do would be to go home but like looking back on it if i over time if i hadn't had, had a youtube channel and i didn't have a phone and i wasn't checking the news i probably would have kept going yeah because i, was, I would have been completely oblivious to it all yeah so maybe I can thank the YouTube channel for making me come home or maybe I could not thank it. But I was like, again, seeing all the people that year finish and carry on no problem. They all got a round of applause at the end and they made it the whole way. Whereas I get death threats yeah. and booted off trail and feeling the stress and the guilt of it all. And everyone that finished got a round of applause and fair play to them. I have mm. nothing against or reflection on the people that finished. Yeah. But that made it difficult to get um, back on social media. But yeah, that, that was tough. Mm. But like, I think if, if I'd kept going, someone in Idlewild a week later after I left, they 
contracted the virus. If I'd kept going and found that out, I probably would have left then. Yeah. Because it would have been, oh, I'm passing through this town. But everyone in Idlewild at the time said it's not so much the PCT hikers, it's all the people coming from LA. Got it. From the big yeah. cities where the where the virus is rife. That's the concern. Mm. But who's going to know? You know? So yeah. I came home, made the right decision. But I, I wouldn't have wanted to carry on in the pandemic anyway. It would have been absolutely annoying and horrible so yeah yeah you know i think it's so important you keep telling that story because it you can make what you want of that story and i know listeners are going to be feeling very different things because covid has impacted people in very different ways but i can i can feel how crushing that would be you know yes you had your 48 hour crazy scramble but no doubt there were years and years of dreaming and looking this up like you don't really just go and hike the pct like you need to know something about it it's two and a half thousand miles you know um that yeah. was in your blood by that point and staying on would have been purely for selfish reasons yeah and that time wasn't a time for being selfish so yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know the trail's always there. Hopefully next year, I took this year off of it, and yeah. you know I'm I'm like if it doesn't happen next year, I'm gonna stop putting my life on hold because it's been five years now. I put my life on hold for this thing, and it just still hasn't happened. Yeah, so <laughs> I got to do something else. <laughs> I got to hike somewhere else. <laughs> so I I'd love if it doesn't happen next year, it'll be Land and John O'Groats because that looked oh, amazing. Nice. Some people did it this year, and yeah, I just I want to do a mega long hike. Yeah, and feel what it's like to be out there for more than a month. Yeah, love uh, it. And see what that's like. Love it. No, it seems like you've really turned a corner, and and that's what I love about this is you have you've do- you dove in, dove divin what's the word jumped there we go let's <laughs> go with that into your toolbox you know you've stepped away from socials you have taken control of your mental and emotional space and you are now bouncing back and I'm I'm just loving that I think that's that's inspiration for us all. Oh, actually. thanks. So it's really you sweet. you you're a little bit slash a lot of an ultralight hiker so i was i was was. that's changed to be bring me up to speed mate what's going on yeah i mean ever since trevor's accident yeah that that i just i'm just like look if you just pack what you need just pack what you need to be safe and comfortable enough Mm -hmm. um and you got to like ultralight hiking people just totally don't understand why people do it people just think oh i just need to be the lightest i can be and but the reason why people do it is so that they can hike faster yeah. so they don't have to carry less food yeah. they don't have sorry they have to they don't have to carry as much food mm-hmm. because it's a shorter span between trail towns and resupplies they usually start later in the season or when the weather's really hot so they can hike faster during the day and actually afford themselves a break when the sun's at its highest. Mm. So being light enables you to do that. You don't have to carry as many layers. So, you know, ultralight hiking anywhere, especially if we take the PCT for an example, ultralight hiking anywhere before the middle of April, do it if you're really sure you know what you're doing. Yeah. But otherwise do the ultralight later in the season when it's probably best to do so. And that all boils down to risk mitigation, experience, knowing your limits, um, knowing when to stop and take an alternate route. So it's really important. And I think um, having a chat with uh, Trevor's dad, Doug, he's all all for uh, knowing your stuff on that before you even decide to go ultralight. And I don't know, the culture around it, I think people that do it seriously, they understand everything I just said. People who do it because they've just seen people doing it for the sake of it mm-hmm. like there's a whole like negative culture around people that aren't ultra light versus it's just like ugh, i can't yeah. bother with that just yeah. just h-y-o-h man like come <laughs> on well i think that's the thing that's really why i wanted to dive into it was to pick that apart a little bit you know and i've always felt that the outdoor community is just a place like you're you never were just a hiker or a runner or a cyclist you're just somebody who likes the outdoors you know, and more and more the outdoor community is becoming like secular and, and divided. And then I'm finding that really disheartening to see. And that's why I wanted to just dive into that um, to, to just gain a greater understanding. And for me, it's like you just, as you say, take what you need to be safe and have a good time outdoors. 
Um, and it's not about the trend of getting the lightest gear or have you got this or have you got that? Like I've steered away in recent years from doing gear reviews. And when I do do something from actually saying what I'm using, because I find people just want to use the same stuff. And it's like, I have done my research and that works for me in that time of year, that trip, that climate. Um, but it doesn't necessarily work for everybody else. And it's, it's, it's about personalizing things and it's about actually getting out onto the trail and finding what works for you. So if somebody was listening to this and they've been inspired to, to head outside and do some kind of hiking, um, maybe an overnight camp, um, you know, because they've decided maybe that would be good for me and my mental health. Where would you steer them? Like what would be the starting advice that you would give them for that? I would say gear wise, just buy what you can afford. Don't worry about how much it weighs. Mm. Just, just buy what you think you need. Do your research. Um, someone who's just starting out, where would I steer them on? Like how to, how to grow and get experience. I would just say get out there and book a campsite somewhere, or do a wild camp in the Lake District somewhere, or where where you where you know you can, and just try it. But make sure people know where you're at um because you know the, the best thing you can do is start yeah essentially but um don't do anything stupid like i did and try and summit ben nevis in full winter conditions without ever hiking a day in your life but <laughs> I, I i i was lucky enough that i made the decision to turn around the guy the next day didn't so yeah, yeah i mean I, yeah it's it's a tough one because it depends on what kind of hiking you want to do because everyone jumps in at different like you know and there are different parts of the world things like that but yeah just get out try it buy what you can afford do it safe good stuff how do you stay fit just hike man just yeah. hike. i don't <laughs> just like the hike. gym i find gyms boring expensive and pretentious and i never go yeah I sign up to it i just don't go because i'll go like once or twice and i'm like i just hate being here it stinks of people's sweat <laughs> like but rubbery sweat you know that's yeah. not a, that's worse than hiker sweat i could put up with outdoor <laughs> hiker sweat but rubbery sweat <laughs> i don't know what well, to say. you've done well at but, not selling that <laughs> yeah, just my other half goes to the gym and fair play like it takes you know you gotta want to go yeah um but i just i just i'm out hiking in the mountains i try to get as much elevation as i can to stay mm. fit um or do as much distance as i can um, any weekend I have, I'm out there just doing it. And I could, yeah, like I said, I could be going for big long walks in the evenings, but after a hard day's work on in front of the computer, my brain's so fried. I just want to, just want to stop moving yeah. and yeah. stop thinking. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm off to Snowdonia tonight. Actually, um, going to go to a place that I've never been before. I usually go to the same places, but yeah, just get out and hike and. That's how I stay fit. Love it. How about camera gear then? Because you you have some pretty cinematic stuff going I'll, on. I'll, on your I'll grab it channel. and show you. I assume, oh, I assume you're going to um, upload this video. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's my cat, my main camera. It's a nice. Canon M50, just M50. a good all rounder, but it yeah. came with an 18 to 55 good zoom on it. So exactly. that's good for like. It's a bit close when you're trying to vlog. You have to really hold it out. But once yeah. if you have apart from that, that's about all that's wrong with that lens but good road mic on it um selfie lens uh, selfie screen on it which is pretty cool and then i've got that's like the main thing mm. phone which is a iphone 11 pro max which um when i got it new was fantastic but over time the amount of dings that it's had it's just not very good <laughs> um, uh dji mavic air 2 that's my main drone now nice. uh, i would get it out but yeah, uh, I just I haven't got any of it out for so long, but I think I might I might maybe do one this weekend. I don't know, but sounds good. Um, yeah, that's it. Just those three things really, because the phone I get most of my stuff on. Okay. Because it's just so easy. But for for getting good walk bys, um, oh, on the PCT, so I'll do a little show and tell. Show and tells are good. Oh, where is it? Uh, I've had this for donkeys. It's just, every vlogger has this is a sony rx 100 oh look Mark at that five. <laughs> yeah uh, but like now it switches on or does it switch on it's run out of battery at the moment but the the lens on it the focus goes we 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 like oh. all the time <laughs> so on the sky trail that was the last one i did 
because it's it's been about the block so so many times. It was doing that every, like almost every time I set it up to do a walk by shot, and then I go back pick it up. I check the footage and like ah, oh, it just added so much time it's to the yeah. hike. It's annoying. So it just needs a replacement. But yeah, that's that's the camera gear. Um, could do with an upgrade there, but yeah. Mm. <laughs> no, that's cool. Well, you know, you seem to take problems and turn them into creations. Talk us through Through Notes. Where did that come from? And uh, where are you up to? Yeah, I mean, I was always like taking notes on my phone when I was on the trail. Because um, the vlogs is one thing, but when you're writing your thoughts down and like plans for the day, uh, people you meet, contacts, things like that, on your phone, it just gets buried in there. And I find, I don't know, it's just a really cold and impersonal way of doing it. So I was taking notebooks out on the occasion and like as soon as it rained or if I had it in my bum bag, it would just start disintegrating. And I tried a couple of other brands and I don't know, it just ripped really easily. So I don't know. And there was like no easy way to like jot down the miles and the days that you're on. Cause I think that's quite important when you're hiking, even if it's like day hikes, like, mm. I don't know if you're doing a couple of days, just having that information really easy. And I don't know, just that I knew what those problems were and obviously I can design stuff and I know how to make booklets and things. Um, I came up with this layout of just um, having like the corners as like flip corners. So you could put the numbers and the mileages there and flip through to get the particular day. And then, uh, I don't know. I've got a few um, prototype images up on the Instagram that you can check out on one of the highlights. Um, but yeah, did a prototype, started testing that and just really enjoyed writing on them. And I was like, I think I'm onto something. Here. I think people might might like this. Um, and then I got the first edition out and sold out of those within a week. Wow. <laughs> I, was just, I think it was like 400 I got printed. Wow. Uh, Garage Grown Gear, massive shout out to them for stocking them. Love it. So they, they bought they they ordered a few more uh last week um but yeah just just being able to write and jot down and stick things in something and uh show it to your mates it's so much better than look at my phone and just go on your notes app like yeah i had a, I had a chap send me some photographs of his notes on a trail and he had he had a polaroid camera so he's sticking little photographs and uh annotating them in the notebooks and <laughs> ah just to see that was just so rewarding. Yeah. And I hadn't thought of doing that, taking a little Polaroid camera with me, but um depends on whether you're ultralight or not, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but like it's just yeah, just fascinating to see what people are coming up with. Like I've got one for drawing, one for writing, uh one with dotted pages so you could do a bit of everything and yeah, just people are loving it. And see if I've got one to show you guys. Here we go. Here's a blaze, the pink blaze one. There nice. you go. So they're fully waterproof, fully recyclable, tear-proof. Uh, I've got a video on the website of me actually trying to tear one and it's just damn near impossible. So I just like having something tough enough that you just didn't have to worry about it and yeah. then waterproof enough that you could, I don't know, walk through torrential rain and everything be fine. I mean, the cover gets a little bit scuffed like anything would mm. if you're constantly walking with it in your pocket. But, you know, I had a guy who did the... Um, uh, Lanza and John O'Groats with one and just a few little scratches on the front and all of his notes and it were fine so Love it. just just a, another thing where I've got my creativity in the outdoors linked together and yeah. people like it and it's just really humbling to have made something that people can take with them instead of just just making videos and you know to have like oh when people like send me pictures of their gear flat lays you know how people like lay their gear out on the floor yeah and then you see a little tiny notebook with my logo on it <laughs> and that's really that's, that's really, very uh, rewarding yeah yeah really rewarding so yeah no it's good i mean if i need to send you some like, i'd love I mean, to have, a, have, have to, a play with some yeah yeah ping me your address i'll send you i'll send you the full suite of Sweet notebooks man. for you to yeah, test we'll out do that, but, yeah absolutely Get shameless video. plug <laughs> yeah shameless plug uh through notes.co.uk um and my instagram handle is at through notes brilliant no we'll we'll get people on there so what's next then? You're back online. You're back doing a bit of hiking here and there. You're still dreaming about the PCT, but where are you steering yourself? Where are you steering the Trail Hunter, which is your sort of YouTube channel and through notes as well? That's a really good question, which I 
I probably need to give a little bit more thought, but <laughs> I'm the same as you. I'm, I'm probably not going to focus on gear reviews for a while. I've tested a bit of gear. Mm. People, people keep sending, trying to send me gear, but I keep turning it down because I, I can't promise them when I'm going to test it out. Mm. Uh, I don't know. I, the only like, the main reason why YouTubers do a lot of gear reviews is obviously for the gear review, but because that's what people are searching for. Yeah. So it really it helps your channel grow. Yeah. And you know, as a YouTuber, you want your channel to grow, right? So, yeah, I, I just again forgot the reason why I was doing the gear reviews. And need to just get out and test some more gear before I do that. So I think for the videos, it's all it's going to be more about hiking and some more experiences. I think mm. I need to get this um, plantar fascia thing checked out oh, that I had on the West yeah. Island Way, and I might do a video, some videos about how that's going. But I really don't know. But I think I'm just going to focus mainly on the three notes. Maybe coming up with some new um, new types of notebook that I've had in mind. Um, working with a new printer, you can do some different processes, which is going to be really cool. Um, and just maybe trying to help that grow. So like I said, just focusing on one thing for a while mm, and yeah. helping that grow and then maybe focusing on the YouTube another day. Yeah. No, I saw the sound advice, actually, I hit the same thing in um, December of last year. I ended up burning out completely and just couldn't. I couldn't, I literally couldn't stand up. You were uploading a days. lot. I remember you, you yeah. were going through a phase of uploading like once a week, once a fortnight. Yeah, yeah. Maybe well, more I'm than still, that. Still somehow doing once a week, but it was just accumulation of everything. And I think the stress of COVID and, you know, the homelessness and blah, 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 everything it was. And it just, I just hit that wall. And mm. um, it, you do, when you come back, you have to think like, what went wrong? And how do I, how do I, you know, mitigate that from happening again? And it's the same here. It's focus on one thing. Although, this is a much and very timely good reminder. So thank you. I will uh, endeavor to live back up to that <laughs> lesson that I learned yeah. and seem to have forgotten. <laughs> I think I think for yourself, the hardest thing is giving it up because it's an it is an addiction. It becomes oh, an addiction. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a there's always like an element of fear of losing something. If I don't keep uploading, what's going to happen? Are people going to forget? Mm. everything or am I going to lose subscribers and honestly people stick around and yeah. people get on with their lives for a while and then when you come back they're like whoa hello you're hello. back you know and it's like <laughs> it made absolutely no difference and my your channel I'm sure just like mine in the three months I've taken off um, it just kept growing anyway because the yeah. videos are still there it's not yeah. like I deleted them and you know you don't lose anything and if anything you gain the experience of knowing what it's like to stop for a while and you feel a lot better yeah yeah look at that you need to slow down abby brown right. you need to you need to chill out man and... <laughs> no never slow this. down never slow down but just one thing at a time exactly one thing if at you time. never need a chat you can you can chat to me oh thanks mate <laughs> look at this We're sending hugs Any through the screen. <laughs> that's hugs it that's the it well, listen, let's, uh, let's start to wrap this thing up. So um, when we, with the One Wild Life podcast, we basically finish our episodes with 10 questions. They're quick fire questions. Well, they're quick on Which my is. half. You can take your time. Are you ready to jump into them? Yes. Let's do it. All right. First do question. It. What was the last book that you read and loved? Uh, Vagabonding. I can't remember the name of the author. Um, I read that multiple times and it's just about how to travel properly on the cheap and solo. Um, always the audio book. I'm not a very good reader. Um, yeah. Vagabonding. Cool. Check it out. I can't remember the name of the author though. I'll Sorry. Pick that one up. We'll pop it in the, pop it in the show notes. Uh, okay. Yeah. Number two, are you a morning or an evening person? Evening. I'm a night owl. Yeah. Jeez. When you said you're like, oh, I'm going to Snowdonia this evening, I'm like, I'm going to bed, mate. <laughs> nah, I always go to the mountains on the Friday night and I'll I'll really late pitch a tent somewhere and then I'll wake up on Saturday and I'm there. So that's why I do that. <laughs> Look at that. Better than travelling tomorrow morning in the traffic. Yeah. Fair point, fair point. Uh cool. All right, third question. If you were reincarnated as an ice cream flavour, what flavour would you be? Uh, it would be rum and raisin. Oh, mate. Because it's because there's a bit of booziness in there. There's a bit of fruit, <laughs> a bit of fruitiness. You know. Covering all grounds. <laughs> yeah. Love it. 
Uh, what did you want to be when you were growing up? Uh, spaceman. That's cool. Astronaut. Yeah? Yeah. Get to the moon. Yeah. Get to the moon. Yeah, loved all that. Very good. Do you still follow, like, space stuff? Yeah, Brian Cox is... Oh, he's a legend. Legends. legend. Yeah. Oh, he's just a happy guy um, as well. Yeah, SpaceX, all of that stuff that's going on. I'm always watching, like, International Space Station vlogs, like Chris Hadfield absolute legend it's lost on yeah. me but sounds good <laughs> oh, yeah. Check All right. out. to be exactly to be explored um okay yeah. question five halfway what is your most unusual talent oh man i don't know what is my most unusual talent pass i, I can't think yeah. of the top of my head well if something comes up we'll uh t oh flip i've never had it turned around um i mean i'm very capable of talking for a long period of time <laughs> yeah. um i can also eat vast quantities of food very quickly <laughs> yes that's a good one it has to be that good, food, good though. but i don't know i will also work on answering that question <laughs> yeah. okay um number six who has inspired you the most in your life Who's inspired me? Ah, uh, hiking wise, Andrew Skirker. Okay. You ever heard of Andrew Skirker? I have. Yeah, yeah. Absolute legend. Yeah. Just all those miles, man. All those miles. Life wise, who's inspired me? I don't know. It's probably a multitude of people mm. that I know. Usually, people that I know that are doing really cool stuff and just make you think god i want to do stuff like that yeah but can't put a name on it but yeah andrew skirker for hiking All absolutely right. it just i learned a lot from that guy and i'm always like if andy says it's fine <laughs> it's fine you know <laughs> yeah if andy says trail runners are good to do the alaskan yukon expedition trail runners are good so I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. brilliant um okay when you're 80 years old what will matter to you the most whether or not I can still traverse Kribgoch, Kribgoch <laughs> when I'm 80. Because when well, the first time, first time I did it, 82 year old was doing it. I said, when I'm his age, that's what I want to be doing. That's so cool. I'm How many saying. times have you done it? Four. 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 Cool. Four. Yeah. yeah. In good weather. I, I don't know. It's just or... um, a bit of snow, but never wind. The wind, yeah. I just, I wouldn't even chance it in the wind. But yeah. um, I just. Uh, the last time I did it, we did it with my brother Beck, and um, I wouldn't have gone and done it, but because she was so adamant she wanted to do it, I was like, "Yeah, we'll do it again." Yeah. But it might be the last time for a while because you know, I don't know. Just need to do other stuff. <laughs> need to stuff. need to yeah, find yeah. more ridge lines. Need to yeah. go elsewhere. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say for people not familiar, um, Kribgoch is a is a route up Snowden. Basically, it's a quite a gnarly, sharp pointy route that yeah. yeah people get to Penapass car park mm -hmm. and they think i did the same thing but i didn't actually follow through with it they think creep goch is snowden yeah because it's the poignant thing you can see from the the main tourist car park yeah but you actually it's the most treacherous way to get up there instead mm -hmm. you go the more touristy pub track but yeah 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 good good ridge line though it is it is good uh what's your favorite food uh, I'm always torn between burgers or pizza because I, I just I, I'm guilty man I love a McDonald's triple cheeseburger Jeez. <laughs> I'm nowhere near I, I am not a vegan <laughs> I try to be a minimalist and I, I'm, I try to do good with my recycling and less waste that kind of thing um, but yeah meat <laughs> I'm a meat eater man <laughs> fair yeah. enough yeah you do you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, penultimate question. What is your favourite outdoor space, if you were to pick one? Favourite place? Yeah. Oh, oh uh, it has to be Snowdonia, North Wales, because I've got to know it so well. I don't need a map any anymore, and, and especially on the like Welsh 3000s mm. routes. So Snowdon, Massey, Glidderai and the Carnedi, just like the back of my hand now, and if I just want to get out and switch off and not even think about where I'm going and just go like, that's nice. Yeah, definitely there. Other than that, can't wait to be able to reach like 
Northern California again and be back in like on the JMT, that kind of area, because I'm, I'm itching to get back to Yosemite yeah. sort of place. But that, it's just a jewel of the earth, that place. Brilliant. Is it Snowdonia or your like local patch then? Is that where you are? It's the closest proper mountains, yeah. Okay. Like I can get there in a few hours. I'm I'm near Swindon. Okay. So yeah, I mean Penavan, that's that's probably like an hour and a half away. Mm. But Penavan and the Brecon Beacons, it's it's beautiful. I just find Snowdonia much more interesting and yeah. there's so many nooks and crannies you can you can uh, explore. So yeah. Mm, I think I can relate to that. Brilliant. Okay, final <laughs> yeah. question. Um, do you have any catchphrases or mantras that you live your life by? I mean, the one I have on my YouTube videos is let's go. <laughs> That's like cool. my catchphrase. Uh, so everyone like, always types that, like, and they're messaging me, like, hey, let's go. Um, but uh, I don't know, really. I just, I always say, just if you think something, if you want to do something and it's scary, you, you need to just go and do it. Mm. That's what I always say. Like, a mega long through hike is scary to me. But I just can't wait to find out what it looks like yeah. to have finished and to be on it. To be like a month in and be like, man, I've just walked like six, seven hundred miles and there's still like a thousand and a half to go. Just or like to to see like to watch your body change over that period of time. I don't know. All those things are scary to me and yeah. interesting. So if it's scary, go and do it. Love it. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> good stuff well Russ listen this has been an absolute pleasure it's been really cool to dive into all the different angles thank you for sharing some of your personal stories as well um Anytime. I've been inspired I'm looking forward to getting back out there so you know it's always good I think as as a content producer you know you're putting so much out it's it's really good to take the time and have conversations like these because it feels like some energy comes back in so I'm, I'm grateful for this conversation yeah I feel good. like I feel like we've both uh, giving each other advice which yeah. is nice like yeah. to talk hiker to hiker and have a youtube channel as well like both of us having the same challenge similar challenges i think that that's really helps me i don't know yeah, <laughs> if it's you helped go. you as well yeah absolutely. hopefully it's helped other youtubers who do hiking but honestly abby it's been an absolute pleasure thank you so much for having me on and um we need to put a pencil a date in so yeah. that i can we can flip this around and I'll get you on my Let's podcast because it it's all about people who create for the trail. That's it. Maybe we'll even head out for a hike together. <laughs> definitely. I mean, yeah, definitely. Let's, Let's uh, make Snowden. that happen. Come on. We've, 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 got the, we've got the emails, we've got the Instagram. We can, yeah, we can it's all going on. Definitely. In touch. Exactly. 100%. That's it. Cool See you, man. All right, look after yourself cool. and um, thanks for your time today. <laughs> Thank you. Take it easy. <laughs> Well, folks, thank you so much for tuning in to the final episode of season two of the show. Talking to Russ was an absolute treat and left me feeling inspired to check in with my diary and create more space. Something I have been looking to do for a while, but not succeeding in hugely well. Maybe by the time season three is going live, there'll be more balance and creative space. It's exciting. Anyway, to round this up, if you want to find out anything about Russ, then head to the show notes. All of his links, through notes, everything is all there, all compiled, easy access. You can find that on our website at www.spendmoretimeinthewild.co.uk or wherever you're listening, show notes should be on there. Everything you need is easily accessible. Folks, I'm going to leave it there. Wrapping up season two. Thank you for being here. You're awesome. We love you. I'm really looking forward to welcoming you back for season three on the 6th of September 2021. Until then, enjoy your adventures and stay wild. We'll see you soon.